Delusions of grandeur or a democratic right? Catalans say they'll declare independence 48 hours after holding their referendum. But Madrid is determined to not let it happen. I'm Imran Garta and today's newsmaker is Catalonia's Spanish standoff. In a few short months, there could be a new country on the map. That's if pro-independence campaigners in Catalonia get their way. The region in northeastern Spain is set to vote in a referendum in October on whether to break away. Spain's prime minister says they're deluded for thinking it'll happen. But supporters say they have a right to self-determination. The only thing is, we've been here before. Three years ago, Catalans voted overwhelmingly to leave and nothing happened except for the punishment of the leader who organized it. But this time, it'll be different, they say. And Spain seems to be taking the threat seriously. Who has the momentum in the build-up to the vote? And what does it mean for the future of Spain? We begin the conversation with this report from Shoaib Hassan. It's the latest salvo in what's so far been a seesaw battle of attrition. Spain's Catalan region is on the brink of a referendum on independence from Madrid. If the majority of votes are in favor of creating the Catalan Republic, the independence of Catalonia will be declared immediately. In the past, the central government has responded by threatening to use all means at its disposal to prevent the referendum from happening. But this time, the criticism has been more restrained. To all Catalans, to all Spaniards, I want to tell you to maintain confidence in the future as authoritarian delusions will never defeat the serenity and harmony of our democratic state. The rare self-control comes despite growing demonstrations as the day of the referendum, set on October the 1st, approaches. The Spanish state grows in confidence as cracks have appeared in the opposition camp. Catalonian President Carlos Puigdemont fired his business minister Jordi Bajet after he said the central government could easily prevent them from holding the referendum. While Puigdemont says that all Catalonians are united on this issue, Madrid controls many crucial federal institutions. It's a surprising turn of events for the movement. It had gone from strength to strength since being launched by then-Catalonian President Arthur Mas. He held a non-binding vote in 2014, asking Catalans if they wanted a referendum to decide if they wanted independence from Spain. The result was a resounding yes, but it was held after Spain's main constitutional court had ruled the exercise illegal. Arthur Mas was charged with contravening the order and has now been sentenced to a two-year term, preventing him from holding public office. He says he has no regrets. If we look for the ideal moment, we won't find it. Now we have a country in movement. We have done a lot of things in the last four or five years. We have a parliament with an absolute majority in favor of a Catalan country. So we have to seize the opportunity. Will this then be Catalonia's Campe Diem moment? Or will the movement fall apart so close to the goal? And as October the 1st beckons and Catalonians appear positive of victory, are Madrid and Catalonia on a collision course regardless of the outcome? Shoaib Hassan, The Newsmakers. Well, to discuss this, I'm joined now from Barcelona by Oriol Amoros. He's the Secretary for Equality, Migration and Citizenship for the Government of Catalonia. In London, we have Javier Farge, a journalist who is against this referendum. Also with us is the director of the Social and Political Observatory, Leopoldo Moscoso in Madrid. Gentlemen, thank you all for joining us. Javier, let me begin with you. They're going to vote, and if they vote yes, they're going to break away from Spain within 48 hours. They have a right to do that, don't they? No, they don't. Why? I'll tell you why. First of all, well, this referendum is unconstitutional. In 1978, the Spanish people voted a constitution that does not allow an independent referendum for the autonomic regions in Spain, whether it's Catalonia, the Basque Country, etc. 
So they would be violating Article 1 of the Constitution, Article 2 of the Constitution, Article 9 of the Constitution, which says very clearly that uh, there's a unity in Spain. And then one of the, one of the big achievements of the post-Franco era was to create autonomy regions, which will enable each region in Spain that has its own identity in many ways to have autonomy governments, autonomous okay. governments. This referendum is illegal, it's non-legally binding, it's not being approved by, this, by, uh, by a reform of the Constitution because there's no reform that allows this referendum. This goes against the very law under which the autonomous region in uh, Catalonia rules itself. Okay, so this so is let's totally ask, illegal. Let's ask Oriol. Let's ask Oriol. Oriol, you have a rich, diverse, vibrant, autonomous region. Why are you breaking the Constitution and going ahead with this referendum? Javier is against it. Yes, uh, we the Catalans uh, feel as a nation, so we think we have the right of the, to decide which will be our future, and that's all we want to do. We want to solve that kind of problems that uh, many times in history has been solved in uh, very horrible ways, just by talking, just by a dialogue, just like, giving the people the right to express their political opinion. All what we want to do is to hear population. We can talk through this television, for example. Journalists can write in the papers. Politicians can speak in, in many kinds of meetings, uh, uh, in the Congress, everywhere. But uh, why don't we hear the people and let people decide what they want to do? That's, that's so simple, and that's the way in the, in the 21st century we think we have to solve the political mm -hmm. situation. Uh, talking about what the Constitution is saying, uh, we have to remember that that Constitution was really uh, a step forward. It was, uh, was good for half a democracy when in the, in the time that we were living just a dictatorship. So in that historical moment, it was really a step forward. But it doesn't, it doesn't put many things very clear. For example, the Constitution is talking about that Spain is composed by uh, nationalities and regions, but don't say who is a region and who is a nationality. And we the Catalans know and we feel, and a vast majority of Catalans feel, as we as a nation. So we want to just to decide. There are Catalans who want to remain in Spain. We respect that point of view, of course, and they can express and we want to give them the right to express. But there are other Catalans that say that the things that the Spanish government is not defending our okay. in industry or Oriol, our let me interest. Ask you, let so me ask we, you if we they just think those, uh, that people have to talk. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, right? So those Catalans who want to stay with Spain, if they are in the majority come October 1st and they vote no, yeah. and the people of Catalonia yes. vote no, will you respect that and put this away? Yes, of course. Okay. Of course, no doubt about that. <laughs> we just want people, let people decide. And I think that democracy is based on this, and you can explain it as complicated as you want. Mm -hmm. But everybody knows that democracy is based on the right of people to decide. And okay. if Catalan people would say no, we will respect, of course. Okay, Leopoldo, has Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy handled this situation well or badly? Well, Mariano Rajoy has not been able to handle uh, the situation uh, uh, rightly. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, he seems not to have understood uh, well enough that it takes two to stay together, but it takes only once to divorce. And uh, the demand uh, who is uh, uh, who, uh, the demand which is now being uh, uh, forwarded by the people of Catalonia is a democratic demand that cannot uh, go ignored. Um, it's not uh, um, uh, people rallying in the streets with uh, casseroles for for the right of decide uh, half a million of uh, separatists, as the government mischievously uh, claims. But the overwhelming majority of the Catalonian people who is demanding the right to decide. And I think this, this, uh, this is a democratic demand that simply cannot go ignored. Uh, uh, beside, uh, one more thing ab about sure. this, which is the idea that uh, um, all, all this class comes from a broken consensus 
uh, over the past, uh, over the recent uh, political past in Spain. The present situation uh, has to be traced back to a broken consensus in which the Catalonians tried to um, um, introduce a legal reform of their statute a few years ago, but it encountered a fierce opposition of the popular uh, party who uh, was then in the opposition in Madrid and blackmail the central government over the question of the uh, statute reform. The Popular Party filed a lawsuit against the reform of the statute, and the Supreme Court eventually ruled against it. Right. There, there of the accumulated resentment of the Catalonian people now. OK, so Leopold, you say there's a broken consensus. I want to go back to Javier here. Javier, you mentioned that they violated the Constitution. You say this is illegal. Yes. Let me ask you about Article 155 of the Constitution because you're wedded to that idea and a unified Spain. Article 155 could be activated by the Spanish government suspending Catalan autonomy. This is almost, you know, punishing them for wanting to vote, punishing them for wanting to have an opinion. Would you agree that that would cause a lot of chaos and a lot of trouble? I, I, I agree that I would <clears throat> be a counterproductive to apply this article, and I doubt that it's going to happen. I don't think that would be necessary because this referendum has, is not legally binding. It's not, it hasn't got a, sort of any kind of legal basis. But on the other hand, we have to understand that I understand Oriol when he mentions that this is a constitution that is almost 30 years old, that there was a post-Franco era, and therefore things have changed. Correct. I have no quarrel with that. The thing is that in order not to have to apply that Article 155, you would have to, in order to enable uh, a, a referendum, you would have to reform the Constitution. Obviously, the Constitution is 30 years old. Other countries in the world have reformed the Constitutions when things had changed along the years. But you would need three-fifths of the Senate and the Congress to approve a reform of the Constitution in order to enable a new articles and new reforms which would enable, again, uh, Catalonia to call mm -hmm. for a referendum. Okay. But on the other hand, but I, I, so we're talking about, yeah, the, this Article 155 would be counterproductive to apply, but it won't give a choice. It wouldn't be, the Madrid won't have a choice but to apply it if they want to go ahead with a referendum which has no legal basis whatsoever. In terms of talking about the majority of Catalonians, if we are talking about opinion polls, you cannot have an referendum every time an opinion poll is in favor of you. You have to talk about mandate, not opinion polls. And the mandate that the, the Catalonians have is uh, most people voted in 2015 for parties that did not support uh, do not okay. support independence. Let's the pro-independence okay, party Javier. only got 47% sure. of point. the votes uh, uh, you, in you, that you, you put a bunch of points there. Let, let's go to Oriol. Oriol, to a point that was made earlier, are you blackmailing Madrid? Because that seems to be a point that both Leopoldo and Javier believe to be true. Are you blackmailing Madrid? Speak about the change of constitution is a bit tricky. Everybody knows here that to change the constitution is a very difficult way, which needs a majority in the Congress, needs a majority in the Senate, and then you have to put new elections. And uh, what he's saying, who is saying that, that the Catalans has to wait to, to wait for a, for a change of constitution is that we have to wait forever. And, and the, the, the reality is that the 92 article of the present constitution lets the government to ask about anything. And also there is another article where the Spanish government, if they want, they can, they can uh, give a, a, a competency to the autonomous government. So if they want, they can give the competence of the, uh, to the autonomous government to make a Catalan referendum, or they can organize a, a Catalan referendum or a Spanish referendum if they want through the 92 article. So there are possibilities, if they want, to, to hear the people. And everybody knows in every country in the world that in a, in a democratic <coughs> country, you can hear the people if you want. Okay. It's not a problem to ask the people. Okay, so, so Javier, Javier, <coughs> listen to the people. Is that Democracy probably, evolves. Probably the Spanish government doesn't want to listen. Okay, and so Javier. They are not interested so in listening to the opinion of the Catalans. Okay, so Javier, why, aren't, why isn't the Spanish government listening? Democracy evolves. You have to listen to the people. Yeah, but, you know, again, I'm going back to the point I'm making about reforming the Constitution to enable a referendum for independence. It does, no. that's, that's the right you, procedure. You, can do you a know, you legally with the change the present constitution. The, the first sorry. second, but we mustn't forget you know at the that. same time that, the, that according to the constitution, according to Article 964, the constitutional tribunal 
is the basis of the legality of the way things go in Spain based on the Constitution. And the Constitutional Tribunal has already ruled out any kind of autonomous uh, uh, sort of you know, referendum. There's no. no agreement. You see, for example, if you have the problem, the situation with Scotland, for example, when the referendum happened in 2014, it was an agreement between the Parliament in Westminster and the local and the autonomous region, which enabled this referendum to happen, which yes. we know the no vote won. And then yes. in the case of Spain, and of course the UK does not have a written constitution. In the case of Spain, you have to have a constitutional reform to enable okay. to call for okay. a referendum. And again, and you don't have that. I don't want to get into the legalities <laughs> of the constitution. I, I want to say something on that. Oriel, if I very can. briefly on this. Yes. Yes. No. Yes, I, 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 li I like the example of, the, of the, what has happened in the United Kingdom, but the difference is not between the Scots and Catalans. The, the difference is, be is between the Spanish Prime Minister <laughs> and the British Prime Minister, because David Cameron says, I want to hear the people. Right. I want to listen what the, Scot does, what the Scots want, and I will follow what the, Sco the Scots decide. The okay. Scots <clears throat> votes no, that's okay. And that's the key yeah. point, that, that, because okay. if that, that any, be any democratic so, government on, in any on. country wants to hear I want to bring in I want to bring in Leopoldo Javier just a moment please Leopoldo yeah. as was mentioned yeah, there's a kind of that... there's a social contract here right there's a social consensus in many ways that Spain as a nation was yes. built in the post Franco era where you have these regions where people are quite different but they're still under the umbrella of Spanish nationalism is the fundamental fear Leopoldo in Madrid that after Catalonia, you'll see Andalusia, you'll see the Basque region, and so on. You'll see all these regions eventually break away. Is that the existential and fundamental fear in Madrid? I don't think um, Andalusia will be uh, very much the case. But uh, of course, there is the fear that uh, uh, Catalon Catalonian uh, demands may be followed by the uh, similar demands in the uh, Basque country, uh, and so on. But in any case, uh, w what I think is at stake here is the fact that when the government is facing a challenge of this sort, uh, it is politics, not uh, the courts of justice, that uh, um, what needs to be used to confront the situation. And as a matter of fact, I think the uh, um, uh, position of the popular party now in government is fundamentally incorrect on that particular count, because the popular party is using the law as an alibi not to confront politically the situation. It's using um, the uh, old principle according to which people are there to serve the laws and not the laws to serve uh, the people. So therefore, if uh, um, one uh, wants to find out, to find a way out of this stalemate. It is politics, not the rule of law, what we uh, need. This, this I say independently of, on mm -hmm. how difficult it might actually be um, uh, to um, uh, change the constitution, which uh, right. I okay. think it's not uh, over the table. Okay, in good any point. Case. So, so, Javier, instead of instead of going yeah. in a granular way and looking at the constitution and the legality or illegality of it, it's politics. Mm -hmm. It's listening to people, right, Javier? Of course it is. Yes, of course it is politics, but how do you base your need to call for a referendum? Are you talking about opinion polls? Now the opinion polls might be in favor of referendum, but in mm -hmm. back in March they were against. When you cannot use opinion polls as a basis to, sp to break away from a country, you have to use a mandate, and the pro-independence parties do not have a mandate okay. because 40, they only got 40% of the votes Let's in the see how many people. in 2015. But, Therefore, but I guess the an majority test, of the no, Catalonians no, 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 no. I guess, I guess an interesting test, Javier, would be how many people actually go to the polls on October the 1st. Very finally, Oriol, I want to ask you, is your movement divided, given that the president of Catalonia sacked the minister who said that you must submit to the will of Madrid, that you will submit to the will of the state? Uh, it sounds as if you're divided. It sounds as if the movement isn't very unified. Has that hurt you a lot? No, no, that is not true. We are very unified. There was a minister who, 
who resigns because he's, he, he's frightened every day, he's scared every day. Every day the Spanish government is frightening our, our public servants and they don't really want to, to listen to the people, but that's the key point. No, and no, no. There's <coughs> so a profound division if, there. If we hear the people... They're not unified, that's and, not and, true. And I, I, agree, and I, I agree in something with Javier, that uh, uh, he says that uh, uh, poll opinions are not sufficient we has, uh, to have a democratic mandate. And in the last Catalan elections, the pro-independence party, uh, we had 48%, uh, but the parties against independence had just 39%. And there were a 12% of votes who goes to the parties who says, I'm not in the yes, I'm not in the no. But the yes was 48 and the no was 39. So if we want a democratic mandate, we have won in the last Catalan elections. But I can understand no, that no. that mandate wasn't so clear because a referendum is always more clear. Ah, ah, so well, we just we have to listen to people and we have legal ways to keep to listen to people. Okay. Javier, how Oriol, how and how Leopoldo, how the results how were if, okay. 48 to 39. If only 48% of Catalonians voted for pro-independence parties, that means that the majority of the people yes. did not agree okay. with independence. That That's was then. We're going to look forward to October. Only, Javier, Oriol, sorry, and sorry, Leopoldo. I'm sorry, sorry I've got to jump in. I'm you sorry, have, sir. You have to say have the to whole truth. I have sorry, to the whole truth is only 39% votes to remain, no, okay. only 39. It doesn't matter, the majority so have to decide. And there is an 80% who matter. wants to vote. I, I wish we could hang around, That's but irrelevant. gentlemen, That's I irrelevant. have to move on. Javier, Oriol, and Leopoldo, it's been a pleasure listening to all of you. I hope you'll all talk to me maybe <laughs> towards the end of September and in early October, because we'll be watching the story very closely. All the best to all of you.